So, the muscles that are involved in his case are the procerus, the corrugator on either side and also the pretarsal, preceptal and the orbital component of the orbicularis. Botox is usually available either as a 50, 100 or 200 unit vial which needs to be reconstituted with appropriate amount of preservative free 0.9 percent normal saline. Once it is reconstituted, the appropriate amount of dosages are injected into the muscles that are hyperkinetic. Hi, so now we are going to look at how to reconstitute botulinum toxin. Here I have a 100 unit vial of Botox with me and we also have preservative free 0.9 percent normal saline. So these are the two things that are required to do the reconstitution. We will now open up the 100 unit vial. So this uh, product comes with its own cold chain that is maintained. So the botulinum toxin vial uh, before the reconstitution has to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees. This is the vial that I have just taken out from the box and you can actually see that it is empty. For someone who is looking at this vial for the first time, they might feel that there is nothing inside. But if you look at the base of the vial, you see a very thin layer of white powder and that is what is your toxin. So, when you reconstitute that will dissolve and it will form a clear solution. So, I have a preservative free normal saline with me and a 2 cc syringe and I am going to draw the preservative free normal saline into the syringe so that we can reconstitute our Botox. So, we are reconstituting with 2 cc of preservative free normal saline for a 100 unit vial. So, each 0.1 ml is going to contain 5 units of the drug. So, here we are ready with 2 ml of the drug. Make sure that all the bubbles are taken out. So, here we have 2 cc of preservative free normal saline which is already pre-drawn in a syringe and we have the recently opened Botox vial. Now you can see that there is a kind of suction within the uh, vial that would pull the saline in. So, you can keep a track on the piston in such a way that the drug goes in very slowly drop by drop along the side of the vial as we reconstitute. You do not want to create too much of turbulence within the vial because this molecule needs that kind of physical stability when you are reconstituting. So, you can see that the vacuum within the vial has sucked in all the 2 cc of preservative free saline and once that is done, we could very gently rock the bottle so that the entire drug is mixed and that initial layer of powder that we saw at the base is now all dissolved and ready for injection. For the injections, we are going to mark the specific muscles that we are going to inject in and we will start with the eyelids. So, for the eyelid, we will first target the pretarsal orbicularis which is a medial injection in the pretarsal region just above the punctum. Laterally, just above the canthus would be the second point. In the lower eyelid, you would want to avoid the medial aspect. So, in the mid pupillary line, you can choose the pretarsal area here. And laterally, you could have one more point which is just below the canthus. So, you are essentially targeting the pretarsal muscles in the upper eyelid as well as the lower eyelid, taking care not to go medially in the lower eyelid. And you can have one more point laterally, maybe a centimeter lateral to the lateral canthus that would be your fifth eyelid point. Now, in addition to that, you can divide the brow between three uh, thirds and then you can give it either at the junction of central and medial two thirds or you can give it at the junction of central and lateral one third. So, these injections would be 
up to a centimeter above the hair bearing part of the brow and you don't want to go higher than that which is going to block the frontalis muscle which is up here and which is actually trying to keep the eye open. So what we targeted is the pretarsal upper eyelid muscles, pretarsal lower eyelid muscles avoiding the medial area, fifth point lateral to the lateral canthus and a variable part of the brow. You would also want to avoid extreme corners of the brow which would be closer to the lacrimal gland and might induce a dry eye. The same component is repeated on the other side and in addition you can also have one central injection into the procerus muscle. We also would want to avoid the preceptal region and the subbrow region because that is closer to the levator muscle and that can cause ptosis.